So uh, my name is Garrett Fortine. I'm with UC Berkeley SafeTrek, and I'm your host today. For those not familiar, SafeTrek stands for Safe Transportation Research and Education Center. We are a University of California Berkeley Research Center affiliated with the Institute of Transportation Studies in the School of Public Health. Our mission is to reduce transportation related injuries and fatalities through research, education, outreach, and community service. SafeTrek conducts research, provides technical assistance and workshops to communities across California, educates the transportation safety professionals of tomorrow, and coordinates major transportation safety programs for the state of California. We are partners with California Walks for our Focus Cities efforts. California Walks is the statewide voice for pedestrian safety and healthy, walkable communities for people of all ages and abilities. They provide technical assistance to communities to create more walkable communities, and they also work at the state level to advance opportunities for active transportation. We'd also like to acknowledge the support of the California Office of Traffic Safety, who provided a grant through the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration for this program. We appreciate their dedicated support of community pedestrian and bicycle safety. All right, we can move to the interpretation slide. Uh, this webinar features simultaneous Spanish interpretation, which will be provided by our colleague Javier Ariola. Once I turn the interpretation feature on, a button will appear on your Zoom interface that looks like a globe. Press this button to bring up the language audio channels and choose the one you would like from the menu. It's highlighted with a uh, sun in this screenshot. Mobile device users will find the option in their settings menu. I will turn the feature on once Javier has had a chance to repeat these instructions in Spanish. So go ahead, Javier. I'm having a little bit of problem here. I lost you. Uh, va a haber un, un enlace. Can you, can you give me your, uh, what you just read, please? Sure thing. You want me to repeat it again? Uh, it, it, it would be best when we do this if there's the function of interpreting is is on. That's a lot of information for anyone. Right. All you need to do is repeat the uh, the instructions about the the interpretation button. I, I I hear what you're saying. Yeah. So if you sure please, if, if we're gonna do consecutive, if we'll please do line by line. Sure. Okay. So I'll repeat it again. Once I turn the interpretation feature on, a button will appear on your Zoom in interface. Okay, press this button to bring up the language audio channels. And choose the one you would like from the menu. Y elija el que desee del menu que se presenta. Okay, I'm going to turn the feature on now. Ahora voy a, a, a prender o encender el, la, Okay, the interpretation feature is on now. Uh, if you would like Spanish interpretation, go ahead and navigate to the Spanish language channel. Otherwise, navigate to the English language channel. Thank you all for your patience. Okay, uh, before we dive in, a couple of housekeeping reminders. Please be sure to mute your audio. We will be recording both the webinar audio and chat features, and we will make that recording available afterwards. If you do not want to be recorded, please refrain from talking or using the chat feature. If you have questions throughout the webinar, please type them in the chat box on your screen and we will answer as many as we can at the end of the presentation. We encourage you to ask questions and make use of this feature. With that, I'm excited to introduce our moderator, Asha Chandy. Asha is the programs manager of Bike Bakersfield, which is the only nonprofit bike kitchen and bicycling advocacy organization in Kern County. She graduated from UC Irvine in 2014 after studying public health policy and criminology. After returning home to Bakersfield in 2016, Asha became more involved in active transportation through her work at Bike Bakersfield in grant writing, fundraising, and policy advocacy. She's currently an active transportation planner with the California Bicycle, Bicycle Coalition, Coalition's Central Valley Bikeways Project. And I'll hand it over to you, Asha. 
Thanks, Garrett. Um, hey, everyone. Thanks for joining us on this webinar. Um, so the, I've come to our topics covered slide. I'm just going to introduce our webinar partners. We're going to go over kind of the history of the region and the river. If you're not familiar with the Kern County area and the Kern River. Um, and then we'll go over sort of the actual parkway where it came from, um, what it looks like today and some of the expansions to it that are going to be impacting residents in the future. And we'll have a discussion. Um, about that. So first, I'm going to go over our speakers. Um, thank you once again, Garrett and Caro from UC Berkeley and California Walks. Um, and thank you for introducing me as well. Um, our first speaker is actually going to be Craig Smith. Um, he is the president of the Kern River Parkway Foundation since 2018 and a board member since 2015. Um, Craig has served as co-chair of the Northeast Bluffs and Trails Committee, running with the Bagels Running Group and the Donut Shop, Runner, Donut Shop Runners. His career has included serving as deputy district attorney for over 30 years, and he has handled all assignments that range from gangs, murders, rape, juvenile, mental health, civil, and consumer fraud. And he was assigned to veterans court to assist um, military in Bakersfield. So welcome, Craig, and um, thank you for the Kern River Parkway Foundation for helping us um, you know, uh, get this webinar done. Um, next, our speaker is Bob Smith. You can see he actually appears on our partners list. Um, Bob is a Bakersfield City Councilman representing Ward 4. Um, his life in Bakersfield started over 35 years ago when he started Smith Tech USA, which is a civil engineering firm surveying Bakersfield and current communities. Um, Bob is a lifelong cyclist and active transportation advocate and founded Bike Bakersfield in 2005. Um, since then, he was elected to represent Ward 4 on City Council and currently sits on both the Water Board and the Kern Council of Governments, Government's Governing Board. Um, and Bob is also a proud father and grandfather. So thank you, Bob, also for joining us. Um, our last speaker is Alexa Koloski from Kern County Public Works. Alexa has been a planner since 2016. She's a graduate of Cal State Bakersfield studying sociology with a minor in urban studies. Um, since starting at Kern County Public Works, Alexa has been a planning ally of active transportation projects throughout the county and has been involved in grant writing and environmental compliance phases of several of these projects, including the Lake Ming bike, bike expansion, um, which we're going to be talking about later in this webinar. And lastly, Javier Ariola is our interpreter. Um, he works primarily throughout Bakersfield and Kern County, interpreting for a wide variety of coalitions and nonprofit organizations, including Building Healthy Communities South Kern. Um, Javier also recently took up biking and is quickly learning about the world of active transportation. So welcome, Javier, and thank you for uh, translating for us. Um, so the purpose of this webinar, if I go back to our topics covered, is to um, talk about this region, our community, and get everyone involved in this active transportation process to celebrate what we've accomplished and where we've come from um, since then, since the beginning. So first, we're just going to talk about a little bit of the environment. You can see that um, we have the Kern River in the map leading from Lake Isabella, which is in the foothills of the Sierra. Um, it's fed into, through, into the Kern River, which passes through Bakersfield all the way out to Buena Vista Lake. And we'll be talking about a lot of these areas in the webinar itself. Um, so this environment, uh, it's one of the largest riparian natural preserves, which is the Kern River um, Parkway and the riverbed. It's fed downstream from Lake Isabella, like I said. Um, you can see the top picture is an image of the river from Beach Park along the bike trail. It's a really beautiful image of what our community looks like when there's uh, when we have access to the river. Um, below the bottom picture is a snap of the uh, iconic Bakersfield cactus, which is endemic to this area. Um, there have been people living in this area since before um, 500 BC, and I'll be talking a little bit about them in the next slides. Um, we have the Yoka and Mariposa people, which were um, nomadic. Asha, this is Karo. Uh, we have, sorry to interrupt you, we have a request from the Interpreter, if you could maybe slow down. Oh, okay. <laughs> I will try. Yes, yes. Thank you. Okay. I will put myself again. <laughs> okay, no worries. So yeah, like I said, the top picture is from Beach Park, a view from the bike path or the Kern River multi-use trail, which is technically what it's called. Um, the second is the Bakersfield cactus, which is something that is endemic to this region and shows how rare and beautiful 
the Kern River actually is. Um, next, we're going to talk about a little bit about the native people, um, primarily the Yokuts and Mariposa Indians. Um, there were about 50 tribes of nomadic natives that lived along the Central Valley and the Central Coast of California. Um, they primarily used the tule grasses and the marshlands along the river to build baskets, clothing. Um, I even found that they used the, the grasses as currency throughout the state, um, which is pretty interesting. Um, so you can see some of the pictures of the native people and how they use some of those native plants. Um, there were some other tribes that ex existed. Um, uh, the top picture of this slide is kind of what the Yokut Indians would have lived in, something made of grass primarily. Um, the bottom is the location in Keysville of the Keysville Massacre, which is um, one of the historic points of this community. Um, a, lot of, a lot of these tribes, although they were separate bands, they did you know, communicate and travel um, with each other. Um, by 1776, we have Father Garces come to this area under the Spanish crown. Um, you can see his statue is the above picture. We have that currently in the middle of Garces Circle, which is just north of downtown. Um, by 1850, California became a state, and 1882, um, the area around Tejon Ranch and around the Kern River was part of the Mexican land grant agreement um, to make this area part of Mexico. Um, by, you can see some, these are very sporadic historical um, facts that kind of coincide with the river. They're um, Colonel Baker, which is what the city of Bakersfield is named after, arrived in 1863. He was not only a civil engineer, but he was also a rancher and a farmer. Um, and along with that came the construction of a lot of the canal systems that we see um, from the river, including the Kern Island Canal, the Carrier Canal, and the Friant Kern Canal. Um, up top on this slide, you can see an image of downtown. This is, um, let me see, 19th and Chester, according to the Bakersfield Californian. So this is kind of what our community looked like way before there were streets, they were way before there were bike lanes. Um, the bottom picture is when um, the electric rail came through. Um, I'm, I don't remember the, the year. I apologize, but Moving on, so as uh, by 1929, we established Hart Park. It was originally Kern River Park, and that is a really scenic area where the river just hits the valley from the foothills. Um, there's a lot of islands in the river, um, and there's also a golf course, regional park, and access to the river and Ming Lake as well. Um, by 1956, Bakersfield College moved up on top of the hills right overlooking the Kern River and Hart Park area. Um, and by 1974, the Buena Vista Lake Aquatic Recreational Center area was established. And we'll be talking about that later in the webinar about how we're going to connect the bike path to Buena Vista Lake. Um, so by 1974, Kern Council of Governments did an initial transit study around CSUB. Um, at the request of involved residents and students who wanted to be able to bike around that area and go to and from Cal State. So that is the original study that created all of these bike projects um, in 1974. And by 1975, the first segments of the Kern River bike path or the Kern River multi-use trail um, was constructed along Manor and Beach Park. And if you remember that first picture view of the river, that is from the original um, bike path. So you can see this purple square is the original project area. Um, oh, the red star is Bakersfield College, which, is, which overlooks the extension of the bike path, which we'll, we'll talk to you later, or talk about later. So, by 1975, um, we had the start of a bike trail, but not much of a, of a regional trail that would connect users all over town. Um, next, I will hand it over to Craig to talk a little bit about the 
Kern River Parkway Foundation, how it started, and how it impacted the, the Kern River multi-use trail. Thank you, Asha. The Kern River Parkway uh, Committee, which originally was with uh, Rich O'Neill and Bill Cooper, started because they were worried about development right on the river in both the primary and secondary floodplains. And in the 70s, that was a real possibility that hotels or other developments would be right on the river and have the wonderful view and access. So instead of that, they wanted to keep it for environmental purposes and recreation purposes. And the previous slide um, indicated it started in the mid 70s. It actually started in 1972 with Cal State Bakersfield students wanting a bike lane. And it kind of all started from that. And that's where we got studies. And the two that are important is the first section of the bike path was approved. And then going to the next slide, in 1980 was the adoption of the 2000 general plan. And why that is so important is that's an official document that was approved by the county and with the city to increase access to the river. And so the bike path became a paramount interest, not only to the public, not only to the Kern River Parkway, but also to the city of Bakersfield. Part of what is important is also in 1976 that the city of Bakersfield bought river rights. And that will always be in litigation. Um, there's litigation right now before the State Water Resource Board. But with the city buying that, then they control and have a water master up at Lake Isabella and determines how much water comes down and when it comes down. So having water in the river is very important and enhances Bakersfield to a great degree. What the Kern River Parkway did in 84 and subsequent was to get individuals and other groups to plant trees in the parkway. And it started with trees along Truxton Extension and went north and south, or east and west, I'm sorry. Um, and there were many plantings in the 80s and early 90s. In 85, the Kern River Parkway became a, a nonprofit 501c3, and that was important in working with other groups and allowing contributions to our uh, foundation for purposes of planting trees and improving the parkway. And that's the primary mission of the Kern River Parkway Foundation. In 1993, the blue light call boxes were installed every half mile. And that was because the wife of a Bakersfield police officer was attacked on the bike path and back then, kind of pre-cell phones, uh, made it very uh, community interest to have those blue call boxes for emergencies. And one of the um, items that we're working on right now is to have better markings along the bike path so that everyone can say where they are. Because if you're riding a bike or walking or running, a lot of times it's hard to describe exactly where you are or where the event is happening. The extension of the bike path in the 90s did occur. And right now it goes from Enos Lane all the way to what I call Piles Boys Camp area, which is past Lake Ming. But in the 90s, it was extended from Manor all the way to Fairfax. And that's where people know as uh, right by Daryl's mini storage. Um, actually goes through the Panorama Vista Preserve below the bluffs and all the way to Hart Park. Going to the 2000s, um, in 1996, there were bike lanes that started where I call Round Mountain Road and China Grade Loop where they intersect by Gordon's Ferry. 
and connect all the way to Hart Park. Um, it actually goes up the bluffs and down through Rattlesnake Canyon, um, but the bike lane is there. And again, that's one of the areas that the Kern River Parkway is interested in getting better signage. In the 2000s, uh, the Kern River Parkway contributed with other groups to plant trees. And I would highly encourage anyone to visit the Panorama Vista Preserve because right now that shows kind of old Bakersfield, how it was when it was swampy and there were trees and there were um, some great photographs of that back in the day to show how marshy it was uh, actually coming through Bakersfield. One of the most important elements of the bike way is the various government documents. And that includes the 2000 general plan. Uh, right now we're working on the 2040 general plan. And why that is so important to everyone is that that is a official document that everyone looks to when planning. And that would include planning for the bike path and the parkway. In 2010, the Kern River Parkway was adopted as an element in the city of Bakersfield General Plan. And just recently, um, this year, the Board of Supervisors uh, also adopted that the Kern County has adopted the Kern River Parkway as part of its element and will, should be included in the next general plan. So going to the Kern River Parkway trails today, the Hart Park is the largest municipal park in the county. Um, it's been used since the 1920s. And at various times, if you look on the history of it, there have been as many as 20,000 people using that at it, uh, back in the day. And even now through COVID, if you go there on the weekends, it's very well used. I'm going to give this back to Asha, I believe. Okay, thanks, Craig. Yeah, that gives us kind of an update on where we are today. It's one of the largest and most highly used parks and municipal trails in the community. And like you said, you know, even with COVID, there's plenty of, there's 30 miles of bikeway where people can run and walk and skate and um, enjoy the parks that are connected to it. So thank you very much, Craig, for that. Um, so this is, like I said, a map of uh, what Craig was describing, all the extensions too that happened um, in the before 2000s and the early 2000s. So the original project area is in purple. We have the Truxton Lake and the Manor um, and Panorama Vista Preserve areas around Bakersfield College. Um, and then we also have the Blue Star by um, CSUB, which is where the original bike lane study came from. Um, we've extended further west past Riverwalk Park and then all the way even further west to Highway 43 and Enos Lane. So that's where we are today. Um, and we'll be talking about expansions to that um, in the next couple slides. Um, so some quick facts about the trail. Um, it is not a bike path. It's a multi-use trail for um, joggers, walkers, and also there's equestrian paths alongside um, the paved road. So especially in the Panorama Vista Preserve, you're going to see lots of horses going through. Um, and there's a, a dirt trail that they can walk on, or they can also use like the shoulder of the dirt path. Um, another uh, pretty timely point is that e-bikes are technically not allowed on the bike path. They're discouraged from being used on the bike path. Can I, can I interrupt this? I'm, yes, I'm sorry. That's wrong information. E-bikes are not motorized and, and the city of Bakersfield allows e-bikes on the bike path. <laughs> yeah, as long as they are pedal assist and can go under 28 miles an hour um, I believe with human power. Yeah, I, this slide is, is off. Right. I apologize. So <laughs> yeah, but the Kern River Parkway Foundation 
and uh, Bike Bakersfield are continually working with the city to the city and the county to get the right word out and, and educate people in the right ways. But there are some specific California laws regarding e-bikes on what is considered a, a moped that doesn't have pedal assist versus what is an electric bicycle which has pedal assist and can only be, um, the speed can only be maxed out with some sort of human power. Um, so yeah. Thank you for that clarification, Bob. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it matters about the pedal assist. I think it's the twenty miles per hour. If, it, if it's an e bike, and then oh, okay, uh, you, it can have a throttle, but it's it's the twenty miles per hour. The no. throttle, okay. The throttle is what matters. I apologize. I will look Pardon. up clarification for that. Um, next, uh, a little bit how it's used today by Bakersfield. We have our monthly full moon ride. Um, usually without the coronavirus and all that, we have, you know, over a hundred plus riders during bike month, um, and in June before it gets too hot. Um, like I said, the Kern River Parkway Foundation has a lot of jogging, joggers, bike cyclists, and, uh, runners on their board. So there's a lot of running groups in the area. There's lots of marathons happening. Um, the trail also connects to various shopping centers, including downtown Bakersfield and the shops at Riverwalk. Um, every 4th of July, we have the fireworks at Riverwalk and, you know, there's thousands of people, of course not this year, um, all together along the bike trail, walking, uh, rolling, just to, to get out together and be outside along the river. Um, okay, so next we'll get into the future of the Kern River Parkway. Um, you can see this is the Kern River and the Stockdale Highway Bridge or the uh, Old River Bridge at the intersection of Stockdale Highway. And you can see the paved um, bike trail following along the river um, and underneath that Old River Bridge. Um, so I'd like to turn it to Bob and um, Alexa also just to give some comments about how the city and the county have cooperated on um, the expansions of the Kern River Parkway Trail, the maintenance, and um, sort of the, the outreach and public education as well. Yeah, I'll just start that, uh, you know, it's it's been a shared asset for quite some time now, and, and it it feels continuous when you're riding on it, but it goes through city and county jurisdictions uh, to the far east and and now the extension that's being made to the far west will both be county extensions and, and the county uh, has the access to Hart Park and the county also from uh, the Calm Center uh, is county and then you know most of it in between is city that has good access and and I think I'd mention also that the funding, uh, I sit on the current Council of Governments and, and there's really cooperation uh, in directing money to the bike path uh, from other projects at times when, when the bike path needs it between the city and county. So uh, a lot of cooperation and, and work to create the great facility that we have. Yeah, that's a really good point. And uh, one thing that the city has uh, has led the charge of is the Kern Bicycle and Pedestrian Safety Coalition. We meet once a month. Um, all of the transportation planning agencies from the city, county public works, Kern Cog, um, Bike Bakersfield, and other active transportation advocacy groups sit at the same table and kind of collaborate, um, bring issues to the table on things that are happening on the bike trail and other bike lanes within the city um so it's a it's a great way for us to collaborate and 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 communicate between agencies um so i'll turn this over to alexa koloski from public works to talk about the lake ming expansion to the east hi everyone i'm alexa and um another city county cooperation project that we have going is the lake ming expansion it was a Bakersfield City and Kern County joint application for TDA Transportation Development Act funds to basically fund an extension to the very east 
of this path, approximately one mile long, to complete this lake to lake vision. So in the next couple of slides, Bob and I are gonna be talking about two different extensions. This one is the Eastern extension, which will go around the Kern River Golf Course next to Lake Ming. And it was basically envisioned by avid cyclists that use this parkway trail quite frequently who became aggravated and tired of having to lose their momentum when the trail ends right near Piles Boys Camp. So they petitioned Kern Council of Governments and the various agencies to try and make a loop around the Kern River Golf Course so that they wouldn't have to lose momentum and they could just loop around and continue riding. And so it are, it's currently in design right now. We're proposing a class one for pedestrians and bicyclists. Um, it's approximately a $500,000 project and it will also include a couple of bench areas where people can pull off of the trail and enjoy the scenic nature that we have around the Lake Ming area. And on this slide, um, it shows, there's a map that shows where this extension is proposed. It's the red dashed line. It shows that the current path ends at Piles Boys Camp and it goes through the Kern River Golf Course, ending at a parking lot. And then there's another segment that leads through Rudall Road and back into the existing Kern River Parkway Trail facilities. It, we have various facilities that connect this trail together. We have class one, class two, and class three facilities. Um, luckily, this area is not too busily traveled and has lower speed limits, which allow the, allow the users to have more safety as they're riding along the trail. Um, the rendering on the bottom left shows one of our proposed benches, Oops. and that is um, one that we're proposing for our late Kern County engineering manager, Mark Evans, um, as a memorial bench for him. He, he was integral in the bike path design and maintenance and construction processes throughout the years. And the image at the top left is of the current bike trail next to Lake Ming. And as you can see on this map, um, the extension is proposed in the top right corner. There's Lake Ming shown, and it will basically just provide a loop to help people turn back around. And if they want, we have a lot of avid bicyclists in this community that take the trail from one end to the other and then turn back around and do it again. Um, it, when complete, this trail connects two colleges, dozens of parks, and other metropolitan areas of Bakersfield together. And I believe we are transitioning to Bob now. Yep, thanks Alexa for that um, presentation on the Eastern extension. And then we'll hand it over to Bob to talk about the extension to the West to Buena Vista. Yeah, I, I would just add on the east side, it's it's adjacent to a, a campground that's right on the river. And as we expand to the west, then we also will be out to Buena Vista Lake, which has campground. So it, it makes it possible to, you know, do some bicycle camping uh, at both ends of the bike path when this is done. So this is a seven mile extension. It goes underneath the uh, Highway 43 and underneath I-5 uh, plans, uh, we have a contractor, so construction will begin within a month or so. Um, and it just, like I said, it creates a, a recreational destination at each end. It's, it's a great commuting facility within town. Uh, it goes to you know, shopping centers, parks, and, and can be used daily. But these extensions that we're doing now uh, give recreational opportunities at the end. It's a uh, $3.8 million from uh, ATP grant is where the money's coming from to fund it. This is just a map of the detail area. Um, like Bob mentioned, on the very left-hand side, you can see the underpass of under Enos Lane and under the five as well. Um, and there will be a long Enos Lane to the lake, um, a, a trail for 
two, both ways of cycling traffic. And it is separated from Enos Lane by, uh, it varies, but it's about 10 feet along mm -hmm. the way. Um, lastly, I just wanted to talk to our panelists and get some final comments. Um, this is a video from the city of Bakersfield um, that Bob was actually quoted in about the impact of the Kern River Parkway Trail. So I wanted to ask each of you kind of a, a summary of how this trail has impacted you guys as residents and as also like members of the community representing um you know public works um the cycling community and the Kern River Parkway Foundation um so Bob would you like to go first yeah I mean I just like the quote says uh, I, I don't believe that it's an uh, underappreciated asset anymore since uh <laughs> COVID came uh you know I'm out there every day and and the community has uh discovered it and and there's people all up and down the 30 miles of the path now walking and jogging and, and bicycling on a daily basis so it's it's a good thing that you know that asset was there in these times uh, uh, and you know as far as how it changes my life i like i said i'm a daily commuter and you know it's eight miles each way and over six miles of it's all along the bike path and along the river and it's it's a great way to prepare and to, to wind down from the day and i think a, a lot of people find that so uh, bicycling for everyday transportation makes life better mm -hmm. craig would you like to add anything about your experience on the river parkway and as part of the foundation yes thank you it impacts so many different areas of people in bakersfield and kern county as an ultra runner, I've run many, many miles and met incredible people on the bike path. As a cyclist, it is just so convenient and is a great meeting place. Um, even if you're going 100 miles, you always start and finish on the bike path. Um, having native plants and trees along uh, the river is just such an asset and it brings together people who love birds, who love plants, uh, who love the river itself as recreation. So there's so many, uh, such a variety of interests into the parkway. And what I think is most important is the public wants it to be improved and extended. So going from right, right now, Lake Ming to Lake Buena Vista is wonderful, but the expectation is it'll go from the mouth of the canyon and now the talk is, will it go to Taft? Will it go to Tule Elk Preserve? Can we extend it to the north and south? Um, so this is just the start of what's going on. And I look forward to the next 20 and 30 years. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Craig. Alexa, do you have any final comments about the impact of the Kern River Parkway on, on your life, on your work, professionally? Yeah, I, I'd love to. Um, I just recently used the path on a bike for the first time a couple weekends ago. COVID drove me insane with boredom. And so I, I had a really enjoyable experience on my bicycle. I've previously just walked on it. And we're just so very excited to be involved in both of the extension projects, especially the extension to Lake Buena Vista to the west, which was just a huge environmental feat for us to get through. It goes through the Kern Water Bank, which has 34 special status species that have been identified on that site. And we spent years trying to pull off the environmental for this project. And I, I believe the environmental has dated back to about the 70s trying to get this extension approved. So we are finally so happy to have started construction on the Buena Vista extension so we can add additional mileage for the residents to enjoy. And also with the clearance from the protected species authorities. Yes, we ha we had very many oversight agencies involved in this project. Um, we we have about an entire page of permit from the City of Bakersfield, Caltrans, um, California Department of Fish and Wildlife, U.S. Department of Fish and Wildlife, the Army Corps of Engineers, 
the Regional Water Quality Control Board and the Central Valley Flood Protection Board were wow. most of the agencies that were involved in permitting the extension to Buena Vista. So while it seems like it's just a simple extension, we have spent years trying to get this permitted so that we can begin construction. Well, it's going to be exciting, like Bob said, to be able to ride across town and have options on camping, recreational opportunities, um, seeing the natural world in in our own backyards is always a, a really great feature of this community. Um, I think we're about wrapped up. Um, Garrett, would you, I, I think I can hand it back over to you. Awesome, thank you. So we're going to take some time now for questions. I invite uh, anyone in the audience, if you have a question, to type it in the chat, chat box if you haven't already. Um, and we do already have one question typed in and had a, from Aureli and had a wonderful an answer from uh, one of our other participants, Brianna. Um, that's about uh, native groups, uh, federally recognized or not, that might be still sort of in the Bakersfield communities, I think sparked by that. Um, really interesting sort of history overview we had at the beginning of the presentation. And so I wanted to expand on that just a little bit um, and ask if there was any involvement and if so, how of Native groups uh, in sort of any of the steps of the project that we've talked about today. I guess I can take that. Or Alexa, if you have an answer. Yes, I sorry, Asha. It took me a second to unmute myself. Um, we we did complete an ASR a study basically demonstrating what archaeological resources were present and we consulted with the tribe. Um, ultimately there were no impacts, but we are working with the Tahon tribe to provide a training for the employees that will be working on site in the event that anything is discovered. Yeah, other than that, in terms of projects with Native tribes, I do know that um, Kern Council of Governments is starting a, a transportation study in unincorporated communities and tribal lands in Kern County about um, kind of what, what community residents there want to see in their transportation network. So that includes like carpooling, van sharing, um, bike sharing program. So hopefully when that study is completed, we'll be able to get more feedback from those tribal lands as well on what they want to see in their communities. Fantastic. All right. Thank you. That's a, those are really good answers. Um, so I, the, I will say that the main thing that struck me um, when sort of reading through this and listening to you all is the like extended period of time, you know, starting in the 70s, as Craig said, of sort of advocacy and um, effort to sort of make this vision become reality. And so I wanted to sort of ask about um, like how that, how that happened, how that energy sort of came to be and how it was sustained. Um, and any, any thoughts you all have about potentially how people who might be listening and thinking about projects or similar sort of visions in their own uh, cities or counties, how that same energy could be translated to projects they might be thinking about. If I may, yeah, this right. is Craig. The original um, you know, start of the tidal wave was with Rich O'Neill and Bill Cooper, who started the Kern River Parkway Foundation. And for a long time, they put it on their own shoulders. But what really has turned the tide is the collaboration. So it's not only the Kern River Parkway Foundation, but we work on a monthly basis with the Audubon Society, with the Native Plant Society, that local chapter, it's Sierra Club, uh, Audubon Society, and many, many very interested individuals um, who are in Kern County and the city. And it's that collaboration that brings forth when you go to a city meeting or a county meeting or trying to 
put together a grant. Um, so my thought process is always, um, if you're interested, find a group that has your same belief and see if they're doing a project or if they can collaborate with other groups. And that's what uh, the expectation is for the Kern River Parkway Foundation is um, to work with all these other groups to address the city and the county on how best to proceed. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Craig. I'd like to add, I don't want to speak for Bob, but Bob is also, he started this active transportation work as a resident and an advocate of cycling um, and started Bike Bakersfield. So um, there's this inherent collaboration between the advocacy organizations, the public agencies involved in transit planning, and um, even you know private companies who have stake in the community. So sorry if I'm talking for you, Bob, but I also wanted to bring up your story as well. I appreciate it. I just I, I always you know really give credit to Bill Cooper and Rich O'Neill. They were they were on their own for for quite a few years, and so uh, my advice to other people is, you know, if you have passion. Uh, stick with it, and then yes, you will get collab collaboration along the way with with other groups. And then, like Asha mentioned, you know, I I have passion. I've always been a bicycle commuter, and so it was natural for me to to start the advocacy group. And of course, that ties into the bike path because it's it's a great commute facility. And and we are expanding. Um, Craig had mentioned, you know, in the future, and we've done. Uh, our master plan for Bakersfield shows all the, it's an agricultural community and it has canals going uh, every which way, north and south from the uh, basically east-west river. And so all those canals are great opportunities and we show those in our bicycle master plan as future bike paths and, and a network of paths that, that tie to the river. So uh, yes, the future does look great for the, for the bike path and, and transportation by bicycling and beggar show. All right, thank you. So it's a mixture of uh, individual passion and, and group collaboration. So that bit of both. Awesome. Okay, so I have another question, which is about uh, how public outreach uh, over all these sort of years may have changed the project and specifically sort of the routes, have they been like prioritized or um, you know, drawn up by public interest or have other considerations such as funding uh, played more of a role in determining those routes? Hmm. Well, going back, if I could, going back to the 70s, um, having the interest in a bike path was what started and then when Bill Cooper and Rich O'Neill came along and they wanted to preserve the riparian areas and one of the best ways of doing that was to include a bike path along the river and that would generate a buffer you have a levee which is what the bike path is on a long part of it and then if you put in uh, native trees and plants along with that um, that just protects the whole river parkway area. Um, so that's what started it and trying to keep that bike path near the river as much as possible uh, was one of their primary uh, interests in the 70s and 80s. And I think having other people use the bike path and then come and agree that we need to extend this um, was what generated it. Thank you. And also I'd, I'd like to add for the Buena Vista extension portion that we had about 14 different alternative routes that were proposed to get to Buena Vista Lake. And we listened as much as we could to the public and to all the interested individuals on trying to keep it as close as possible to the water and the Kern River, but ultimately the environmental concerns outweighed everything and that's how we got to the western extension that we have today
All right, thank you. Uh, that's a good reminder to me to consider, uh, you know, thinking about environmental concerns as well. So that's a, and the role those play in planning. So that's a great point, thank you. So we have a question from chat um, about, do we have a, a user count, you know, or, or any sort of sense of the use between recreational users or commuting users? I know we talked about like people shopping or using it to, for access to commercial destinations as well. Um, do you know if there are uh, traffic counts along the parkway? I don't know if Ferncog does anything like that. Yeah, we do traffic counts. I, I don't have those numbers handy, but I, I you know, if somebody wanted to follow up, the uh, Ferncog would have them. I, okay. I, you know, I think they should do one now. <laughs> Obviously, uh, it's exploded in the last few months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'll do some research about that and see if we can get some numbers on how much it's used. Um, and I'll, I'll share that with you, Garrett, if that's helpful. Yeah, and there's a question from chat. So maybe when we email out the, uh, like the, the webinar link, we can email out a link to any interesting information along those lines. Okay. Because that, that gets at a really good question that I had as well about sort of you know, recreational use, which we obviously like, see the very strong case for, but also like biking, you know, as, as Bob said, like biking as a, um, you know, as a way to get to work. So as a very like daily, you know, daily life thing. Um, okay, so, and sort of building on that sort of uses of the trail, we saw in the presentation a couple examples of active transportation programs, like that full moon bike ride that used the trail. So I wanted to ask a couple of sort of twin questions. Has the trail sparked new programs and new interest in cycling or other uses of the trail? And sort of the other side of that coin, did existing active transportation programs help build interest in and support for the trail? Bob, would you like to take that one? <laughs> Well, I'd say the trail came first. I mean, the trail started in the 70s. And I think as far as Bakersfield is concerned, everything grew from that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, active transportation, there was a bike boom in the 70s. And, and that's when Bakersfield began putting bike lanes on arterial roads. And, and that helped, but uh, it's not a very pleasant bicycling experience to to have a five foot bike lane on a 55 mile an hour arterial. And so the, the bike path was really the first place that we could have a pleasant bicycling experience. And, you know, the, the commuting, it, it basically bisects uh, the population of Bakersfield. And so and we have numerous access points to it. And so it's easy to get downtown, it's easy to get you know, to the east or, or the west side of town where you know, people live. And so it really is a great uh, you know, shopping, work, uh, commuting type facility. Um, and again, those, those numbers continue to grow. Uh, I don't think, you know, Bakersfield is not the bicycle community that, well, Portland, Minneapolis, you know, the, a lot of cities that have had infrastructure for longer and, and have that, but uh, it definitely grows once you get the infrastructure there. Yeah, definitely. Like one thing I've learned from working at Bike Bakersfield is like, if you build the safe, if you build a safe route, people will take it on their bike and, and, if it's enjoyable, they'll use it more often than not. Um, and that kind of leads into Garrett's question about how this led to more active transportation projects in the community. Um, I'd, I'd like to say that interest and in increase in ridership along the Kern River Parkway led to the Friant Kern Canal plans, which we'll be talking about in our next webinar. Um, but we are um, ba basically uh, the city of Bakersfield is spearheading 
a, a charge to add a parkway trail along another canal that would connect the north and south regions of town um, to the east-west connectivity of the Kern River Parkway. So um, I think those projects like that and the increase in bike lanes throughout the community um, are, are from the Kern River Parkway. People realize that they can ride and they can enjoy their ride and they don't have to break a sweat and they wanna keep riding in more places. So um, that kind of leads into our next webinar topic as well. Absolutely, thank you, Asha. Uh, and I will, I will take that and, and run with it. Um, that I think with that great conversation and that final point, uh, we're at the end of our session together. So uh, thank you to all of our presenters. Thank you, Asha, Alexa, Bob, and Craig for your time on this and sharing your knowledge and experiences. Uh, I encourage everyone to take what you've learned today and apply it to your work. I wanted to extend, extend a special thank you to our interpreter, Javier, who uh, we tried to speak slow enough for and I don't know if I'm succeeding even right now. So thank you, Javier. Um, and I also wanted to thank um, the participants for being here, um, for asking questions. Uh, and for providing some wonderful uh, answers. So our next webinar, we will be hosting Bike Bakersfield for another Focus Cities webinar on Tuesday, September 15th from 3 to 4 p.m. Pacific time. Bakersfield City Councilman Bob Smith will be joining us again, as well as his colleague, Bakersfield City Councilman Andre Gonzalez, for a conversation about expanding Kern County's bike network. And I'm going to paste that link in chat right now. Um, so you could register right there if you want. We'll also be sending out emails and you'll probably all receive more emails with that registration link. Uh, and so finally, we will be sending uh, out these slides as well as a link to the recording of the webinar. Uh, 